Hey, I'm Imran Web Squad, and we already did an introduction video into the Bricks Builder. We're going to go a bit more in depth in building out a site with a blog page and WooCommerce as well. By the way, if you don't like my face or my voice, you better leave and go watch another video because I'm here to stay. Right, let's get started. At the time of recording, I'm using Bricks Builder version 1.5. Now, it is a great theme to use. I'll show you the pricing in a moment. You install it, activate it on your WordPress website. Why am I even using it or even doing a tutorial? because it's got a lot of optimization built in and throughout the video, as we do various stages, I will keep reviewing what the page speed score is. Now the pricing for bricks is pretty damn good. I mean, look at what you get here for unlimited. It's a lifetime price for unlimited websites. You cannot deny that that is an amazing price. Now, like I mentioned earlier, it has got optimization already built in it and it has got some SEO as well. So my mindset is, can you build a WordPress website with literally just a theme. Of course, if you're gonna add WooCommerce, you're gonna add in the WooCommerce plugin as well, and maybe PayPal or Stripe add-ons as well, but can you keep it really slim and succinct? Personally, I think you can. Now this website has got no plugins installed whatsoever that you can see on here. This is a test website I use, by the way, and in terms of themes, I've just got bricks installed. Now, just to let you know, on a completely blank website, the page speed score for this on the mobile obviously is 100% and on the desktop as well. And we are gonna be monitoring this as we go along. And now I do wanna stress out, okay, we just have one theme on this website and zero plugins. There's no optimization plugins added at all. If you've never used Bricks before, you do get some getting started information with some documentation and help guides, but really all you need to worry about, in my opinion, it's just go through your settings and make sure you're okay here. I have found that it's better to work with the dark setting. I used to work with light settings in when I'm building out websites, but the dark setting, it, it makes things clearer and easier to look at on the screen. That's just my opinion. Also enable the toolbar logo link to be dashboard. So that means if I ever hit the Bricks logo in the top left corner, it will take me back to the dashboard back into WordPress basically. And also I've said open it in a new tab. I'll show you how good this is, okay? Because it can make things a lot more efficient. And down here in the structure panel, I've said enable, duplicate and delete. This is where you have like your section, your containers and things like that. And you wanna very quickly duplicate or delete without having to right click or hover over it. You can just go and click and it's pretty quick and easy to do. I'm not gonna change anything else on here. I mean, in terms of performance, I will quickly mention, this is what I've done. I've disabled loads of stuff that I'm not really bothered about. So that's okay with me. And I'm not adding in any custom code. You have the option of using custom fonts. So you get a limited uh, supply of fonts within Bricks, to be honest. But if you want to use something like Railway, Lato, or Poppins or something, do a custom font. What you do is you do add new and you go over here and we're going to type in Lato. And I'm now gonna add in my variants. So just make sure you've downloaded them from the Google Fonts website and then just import them in. So I'm gonna pick Finn, I'm gonna click Edit and I have a TTF file and I'm now gonna upload that. Hit Select and that's basically now in. And I'm now gonna do that for four other versions. And after you hit Update, you'll see what your fonts are. So you can basically see what the Finn is going all the way up to the darkest black one over there. Another important aspect before we get onto building is to think about your images. Go and get your resources or your assets, your logo, whatever you're gonna show on there. But I strongly recommend that before you add the images in, go to a website called bulkresizephotos.com. What this will do is convert your images into WebP. Now since Safari iOS version 14, WebP is fine, okay? This website, bulkresizephotos.com, does not work very well with Chrome or Safari, but it's completely fine with Edge. What you do is you just drag your images in. I'm just gonna drag four in. Make sure you've got the images scale at 100%. You can scale and crop them later on in WordPress Media Library, but just get them in at 100%. Make sure that you've converted it into WebP and leave the quality at 80%. Believe me, I've tested this, 80% is fine. This is now doing this real time. It is taking four images that were a total of seven megabytes and it's dumped it down into 1.1 megabyte. That is still quite big because these are big images, 1920 by 1080. But if you were to now scale or crop them, the size will shrink accordingly. So here's my WebP images. Now this one here is only 36 kilobytes. It's 1000 by 1000 pixels, 36 kilobytes as a WebP. 
Previously, as a PNG, this image was just over 400 kilobytes in size. We are now less than 10% of what it is by converting it from a PNG to a WebP. So let me lay it down what we're going to do. We're going to create a home page. We might do the menu as well. So we've got something to put in the navigation bar. We're then going to do a hero banner, uh, pad out the page with some items, check the page speed score, check the mobile as well. And then we'll add in a some uh, dummy blog posts. We'll do a single post template. Then we'll have post archive on the home page as well. By the way, I'm just going to create a one page website. And then we'll have some uh, WooCommerce shop items as well. Again, single product template. Then we'll have the products archive as well or the shop page or however we want to do it. I might make it up as I go along, to be honest. And again, we're going to check the page speed score as we go on. So let's go and create our first page. This is all pretty simple, right? You go to pages, you can either click add new straight away or just go to all pages and then click add new. So we're just going to go over and I'm going to type in here home. You could call it home page. You could even name it after your business if you want. So let's say you sell jewelry and you've got a company name. You might put like um, uh, affordable jewelry as your home page. Just one of those tips for uh, SEO URLs, but I'm going to call it home page. We're then going to click edit with bricks. And this is where the dark um, layout I find works better. I was doing this in light. My previous video had light and I sometimes found that it was easy for me to know where I was clicking and what I was doing with the dark version. Now you see this button over here, if I click that, this opens up my dashboard in a completely different tab. And this is why I do feel like this little feature here, one of the settings is really neat because in other page builders, I often had to kind of go in and have another tab open, but this is really neat way to do things. I'm using a MacBook Air, but I have like changed my resolution so I can see 100% of the screen. On some laptops, if you, if you, depending on your resolution, it might say something like uh, 65%, something like that. And you won't have the gray bars, right? You, it will be the full screen, but it might only be 65% or 70%. Please bear that in mind when you're building because you might put an image on and you might make it really big, but if your resolution or your screen size is, say, 65%, when you view it on a proper screen, you're going to go, whoa, that image is super huge, gigantic. So just bear that in mind. Uh, and it also just says that the width of this is 1140. On a bigger screen, it would go to 1920, 2000, whatever I've got. On my ultra-wide 49-inch screen but I'm doing this on a MacBook Air, so just bear that in mind. Now, before we do anything, we are just gonna set our global styles up. So now, if we go over here to our settings cog, you will see it says theme style. Now, if I just expand this a little bit like that, if I go down, well, let me just very quickly click, tell you on here, there is no condition on here at the moment other than entire website. If I do that, okay, any styles I apply, I could actually individualize them to be on certain pages, maybe for just a shop page or a post page. What I apply here in terms of my typography and my color scheme, I want it to be on the entire website, okay? But I just want to let you know that you could individualize it where you apply certain styles or you could even exclude as well. Let's go to general. I'm going to say that my website is kind of wide. If you want to have a boxed layout, go for it. I say go with wide, and then if you want it to be boxed, you do that later on with your containers or things like that. So you might have your content kind of just sitting in the middle of the screen, like with a single post template. So I'm going to leave it as wide, right? We're not going to do anything there. And now we're going to go on to colors. I've already applied some colors, primary color, secondary color, and all of that. You can just click into here, and you can start to pick your colors. Over here, I already have, in fact, let me just get rid of this, okay, because I did it already earlier. So when you first go into the color scheme, right, you will see this. So you might go and say, okay, I want that to be my uh, secondary color. I mean, I'm going to go for black for now, okay. What you can also do is start to create your own color palette as well. If I go down here and I click the plus sign, I can create a completely new color palette. So if I was to call this new two, I've already got a new, but I'm just going to call it new two. So you know what I'm doing here. I'm going to click create. So I'm going to type in this hex code and you can see the color there. Now, if I hit save, it will add it to the color palette. Why are global colors really good? Well, you know, when you work with clients and they go, hey, I want a green color and you go, yeah, okay. Yeah, we do green. And then they go, oh, I want yellow. You kind of go, oh my God, I've got to go through all of the headers and bits of this and bits of that, background overlays and things like that. You can now just change the color here. 
like your primary color, pick a different color and it will apply it across the board. Only when you have assigned it though to your particular widgets or whatever we're using on here. So that's the global colors. Let's go down to typography as well. By the way, do you notice we've got these yellow dots here? Can you see that? If I was to do that, anything I've applied previously has now disappeared. Like with the colors over here where I've assigned colors to primary, secondary and things like that. Let's just go back into typography. And the font size here, can, now this is something I had to learn and I'm gonna say thanks to some of the people that were talking to me on one of our live chats. HTML font size 62.5%. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything, no I like. The normal browser or default browser REM or the root HTML was usually 16 pixels. Therefore, one REM was 16 pixels. What Bricks does is apply 62.5. What that now means is that one REM is now 10 pixels. Because if you did two REM before, it would be 32. 16 times two, 32 pixels. Because Bricks does 62.5, if you now do two REM, it is 20 pixels. Three REM, 30 pixels. 1.5 REM was basically gonna be 15. Does that make sense? So you did 1.8, that is 18 pixels. 0.6, well, that is now six pixels. So in terms of building things out, you actually get to understand the sizes a little bit better. I can make this all bespoke and click into every single heading and go and pick my font that I've uploaded, the sizing and all of that. Or I could just do like a generalistic approach. So I'm gonna go to body. I could pick my color. So I could go with white or black or gray or whatever color I wanna go with. Remember though, that if you go down here, I could actually pick from my, uh, my new color palette I've got, or I could even just go with the default ones and pick one from here as well. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, well, we've already set our global colors. Why are we having to pick them again or from a default palette or whatever? That's because if we go back over to colors, and this did catch me out the first time I was using bricks, the colors are only applied to the heading or buttons. So make a note of your hex codes, go back to your typography, and when you are assigning your colors uh, down here, uh, if you have got like a list like over here, go and add in your colors again. It does feel like duplication of effort, I will admit that, but once you set it up once, it's kind of done and you're kind of okay, but I'm for now just gonna leave it as that color over there. And here's where you wanna think about your size. Now, if you know that your body or your text is gonna be a certain size, you could stick it in right now. I have to be honest, I sometimes like to fly a little bit and I define my sizes when I'm actually working on the page and then I might come back and refine it over here, but you go with what works with you. I mean, if, I, if you were gonna set it now, I would say go in here and type in 1.6 REM because that would be 16 pixels, which I think is a pretty fair way to set things. Um, but I'm gonna leave this blank for now that we have our standard font and we don't have a lot, but down here we have Lato and Monstera. I installed the Lato one. Let's go with Lato. And in terms of weight and the style, again, I'm gonna leave that flexible for me to adapt it as I go on and then I might come back and then set a default value in there. Please do use the timestamps in the video description if you wanna skip anything or you didn't really need to know about global colors and fonts and stuff like that. I'm Imran Web Squadron. Please like, subscribe, share and follow. And don't forget if you go over to our website, websquadron.co.uk, we do have mastery modules to help you out with business, marketing, analytics. Maybe you wanna see our web proposal documents and some other stuff like that. Now we're back in the page. Now you do have the option where you can start with a section and you'll get one container within. You can also have a pre-built layout which you can refine and do what you want with it where you'll get a container and columns within it. You know, you can see the layout there. By the way, the columns are actually blocks. So you'll get used to this uh, terminology in a moment. I'm not gonna add anything to this yet. The main reason I wanted to show you this was just to A, create a homepage with nothing in, and also to do the global colors. But what we really need to do is actually create our menu. We're now gonna click the Bricks logo over here because it will open up the WordPress in another tab. Remember I said that was pretty cool? We're gonna go to appearance, we're gonna go to menus. We're gonna create a new menu because we don't have one at the moment. I'm just gonna call it main menu because I'm not that dramatic with my naming. And I'm just gonna click view all here and there's my home page. There's the fake page two page as well. So if I wanted to, I could add both of them. But I'm actually gonna remove this and just have the home page. Quick tip, 
If you had created your homepage as, say, affordable jewelry as the name, when you do add it in, you would have gone over here and then you would have typed in whatever you want to type in to be visible on the navigation menu. Let's just call it homepage like that. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a one page website, so you could even just call it top, couldn't you? Top home. Now we'll leave it as home like that. Let's just hit save there. That now means we've got a navigation menu. Let's now go back over to our home page, okay? And in fact, not the home page, sorry, let me go back a step. What we're now gonna do is create our header. Header will be basically visible across the entire website. So this is gonna be a one page website anyway, except for the WooCommerce bits and pieces and the blog posts. But now we're gonna create our header. Templates are super powerful if you wanna create an item which is visible throughout the website. You know, you don't wanna create a header on the home page, specifically just on the home page, and then create another one on the about page or the services page, especially if you want to create consistency. So the template will allow you to have like basically a template that's going to be visible throughout the website. And that will become clear when we come to do the single post template and the single product templates as well. On the left hand side, when we go over to Bricks, you'll see the word templates. Let's click that. We do have like, ignore what we have here because we're gonna recreate all of this, but what you would now do is basically hit add new. If you have got a template from somewhere else or someone's built one or you've purchased something, you could import it as well. You click import, you import your template. It might give you extra colors and images and things like that. We're gonna click add new. First thing we're going to do is give this a name. I'm going to call it header template. Now you could go straight into edit with bricks. Please note on the right hand side over here that you definitely do want to pick, well, what is it? So is this a header, a footer? Is this just like going to be a single for your posts? Is this a section that you could just add in throughout your website? Maybe you create like a testimonial section or I don't know, a services section or something. that has got a lovely little layout and you're gonna reuse it throughout your website on different pages. Well, you could just create a section. Archive, that's gonna be for your posts uh, archive page. So like the blog page, basically, that probably makes more sense to everyone. Search results and if you want an error page like a 404, let's just go with a header and let's click publish. Now let's click edit with bricks. Inside our header template, we can now start to add things. I'm gonna have a logo in the left and a navigation menu in the right. I might add in some social sharing icons as well, maybe, I'll see how I feel. Now there's two ways I could do it. I could either click over here and just straight away add in a section and a container, or I could go over here and click this option, or I could even go down to here and just click section as well. So it's up to me how I wanna do it. I'm just gonna click over here and get the section and container over here. And I'm also now gonna drop in a block as well. So I have now one column, okay, within the container. Um, In the past, I actually would have just started building within the container, but some people have now started saying to me that actually the section container block um, approach is works better in terms of coding and the way things are laid out. Now, in terms of this block, I am going to make sure I've clicked the block and I'm now going to, sorry, not click the block. What am I doing? Go over here and I'm now going to pick heading like that. So the heading now sits within the block and you can see the structure here. Any one of these I can duplicate if I want or delete as well. Uh, but Bear in mind, though, we do have different layouts over here for responsive mode, and we are going to be checking the mobile as we go along. So I have a heading here at the moment. I'm going to go over to my section, uh, like so, go to style, and I'm going to go to the background, and I'm going to give this a background color. I'm going to go down here, pick uh, num new, and I'm going to pick this slightly off-white grayish color over there. I'm also going to go to the layout, and after adding in the heading, you can see it's really tight up against the borders. So I'm going to give this some padding. I could either go in like this and add 10, 10, 10 all the way around and do it individually, or you're better off to just link it. So when you add in a value, like if I change this now to be like 110, you can see what's going on there, right? So it applies it all the way around. So we get a bit of padding over there. I'm now just going to go over to my heading, go to my content. I'm going to call it Web Squadron. You would actually have probably dropped in an image here with your logo and then size it. We are going to be doing images later on on the hero banner that will sit underneath. But you could have added an image. I'm just putting in text. What I'm now going to do, though, is while I'm still in the block, I'm going to go over here and I'm now going to add in my nav menu. You will find it in this list. But if you don't want to search for it, just go over here and start typing in a bit of the name. So let's click nav menu. Now, can you see what's happened? 
We've got the heading and the nav menu, but they're now currently sat underneath one another. And that's currently because that is how the structure is. Every time you add something, it goes underneath one another. Now, right now you're gonna say, but that is rows, isn't it? Because it's like individual rows. Well, yeah, I get that. But because they're stacking, it's the column approach. Whereas the row approach means they all sit next door to one another in a row, which looks like columns, but it's not. And it's something you will get your head around. Now, if I click back onto block at the moment, can you see here, the direction for the block is column. So they are sat underneath one another. If I change this to be row, they are now side by side. But I don't want them to be side by side. I want uh, the header to be over here and I want the navigation menu to be over there. If I go down here to align uh, in terms of the main axes, they're currently on the left-hand side. If I do that, they just go dead in the center. But if I go down here to space between, they are now spaced out. You got space around and you got space evenly as well. But the one I really want is space between. I could have gone all the way to the end, which is not what I want. So we're going to go with that approach there. And that means that no matter how big the screen is, unless I methodically change it, they're always going to be spaced out like that. Now at the moment though, you can see the home is a little bit higher up. It's not centralized. And that's because we now have to go to the cross axes and make sure that is in the center. It doesn't look it, but that is in the center. The obvious thing at the moment is that I have not set in any fonts or anything like that. So let's go back over to our heading. Let's go to style. By the way, I should, before I go to style, mention, you do have the option to define what kind of item this is. Now, this logo, this is a heading. You normally would have added in a graphical image, I bet. But if it wasn't, I would say make sure that is not a H1 item. Because your H1 item is very important for your SEO where you want to get your keywords in. And if my keyword is consultant websites, small businesses or whatever, Web Squadron is not my keyword. So make sure you do change that if you ever use a heading for your logo. You also have the option for type, which is hero or lead. But oh, down here is the style option. Primary, secondary, light, da, 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 da. If I go for secondary, I get this color. Do you remember what the color was for primary? It was white. So if I scroll up and do that, I get the white color. So if you want to start assigning your colors, because do you remember the global colors affected the heading and buttons? Now I could, if I want, assign it right now, or I just go to style. Okay. Um, go down. Oops, sorry. Let me just shrink down the layout for that. Go to typography and I could now assign my color scheme here. So I might go new. And I could either pick this color or I could go to default and pick a, a default color. Of course, I haven't done this systematically, but I would strongly recommend in your color palette, you add in your colors here. Point double two, double two, double two, which is kind of an off black color. When I'm going to hit save, that is now saved to my color scheme there. OK, and while we're here, let's just get the white in as well. Now for the heading, I can just go and pick that one. It, it's easier to do it like that, in my opinion, mainly because now I've set it, I can use that throughout the website. Now let's set the font size, REM. I'm going to go with three, which is 30 pixels, if you remember what the sizing was. How are we aligning this? Well, it's left aligned, so we'll leave it like that. You, can, you don't even have to click it, to be honest. You could just leave it. It's always going to be automatically left aligned. Now we start to think about the fact that it is automatically Lato because we set it in our typography, didn't we? For our bodies and headings and everything. But what we might want to do now is consider what is the weighting. So do we go with 100 or do we go with say 700? Now let's set our navigation menu. If we go over to content, I'm going to make sure it is definitely pulling through the main menu. Normally, if you only have one, it kind of automatically does it, but it's not a bad idea to pick it like that. How are you setting up the layout? So even though this is a row layout, if I start to add in more items, the navigation menu could become a vertical item, but I'm going to leave it as the horizontal row effect. You have the styling for your top level menu, sub menu when you have a drop down or even the mobile. Now, for now, I'm just going to go to style. Make sure the color for this is, I wish I hadn't done that in U2 now because it keeps appearing. We'll make that a dark color as well, like so. We'll make sure this is REM and I think I'm going to go with a two, something like that. And in terms of the weighting, we will go with, let me just try out the 400. Mm, no, it doesn't look too good there. We'll go with the 700 there, okay? Keeping it pretty simple at the moment. Now, 
When you come to go to the mobile like this, go over to your left hand side over here and go down to mobile menu. And what you want to now make sure is what, how does it appear when you click it? Do you want it to come on the left or the right hand side? Let's just put that back to right. Um, I've got a bit of a fade in approach. How does it sit vertically? So centra straight at the bottom at the top. How do the words sit in the horizontal alignments as well? So you have a lot of things here to think about. You also have the facility to change the width. Now I'm going to go over here, go to percent, and I'm going to change this to be 85%. So when you hit the slide thing, well, when you hit the menu and it slides in, it picks up 85%, which I think is not a bad idea. What about the color scheme we're going to go for? So let's click that, uh, go down here, go on to new, and I'm now going to pick my off-white color. For instance, something like that. Now, do you notice the font color has, it just doesn't work, but that's because it's just brought through what it was has as default. So now we've got to change that to suit what we want. I'm going to go to our typography over here and we are going to make sure we pick our colors again and we'll go for that color. And there you go, you got your wording. Bear in mind though, that was just the color. So now you've got to think about your sizing. So we'll go with REM. I'm going to go with a three. I'm going to make it really bold and brush, okay? Um, and then you can change your weightings and everything like that as well. Your line spacing, your letter spacing. You can go, you can, you, you can go for town what you want to do on there. Let's just jump back into desktop. And I'm now just going to click preview. So this is what it looks like on the preview, okay? Now, something I did not do that I'm now going to do, and this is why I wanted to show you the preview as well. If we were looking at this on mobile mode, okay, when you click it, the navigation toggle, the menu is going to slide in from the right, okay? And we will be looking at this on some other screens as well. But do you notice that currently our desktop is not all the way across? I actually want it to go all the way across the website. So if we just go back in over here and we go to our container that this sits inside, if you go over to the content, we have these options over here to stretch. So if I now hit stretch on the container, remember all of the items sit within a block within the container. The block is like a column. If we now save that, now we go to preview. Can you see now they've gone all the way across? So that's our header done, but we need it to be visible across the website. And even though we kind of said this is a header template, it's not actually visible across the whole website. So when we're back in our header template, if you go over here and click the cog, you will see now a uh, template settings. Now I do want to mention though, if you're in a normal page and you go to hit the cog, you'll have theme and page. You won't have template settings. That is only visible on a template. When we click on template settings, we've got header, conditions, and populate content. If I go to header, I can decide is this going to stay on the top or is it going on the left and right? I don't, I hate, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not a massive fan of that unless you're doing like a vertical um, uh, an, uh, header or a menu system, then that can work when you have like a fixed sidebar. I'm going to leave it as top. If I click add condition, I will now say, well, where does this work? Is it only on the home page, the landing page? Is it only on a search results page? Where does this menu kick in? So you could say, not menu, sorry, header. You could have two, three, four, five headers, and you might have a different header for different pages. Maybe you've got a special competition page, a one-off offer, a, a particular service or product you're selling, or maybe your home page has a very special header. Maybe it doesn't even have a header. It's not until you go to other pages on your website. So you can think very methodically about this. I'm just going to go with the entire website, even though this is like a one page website, except for the shop and stuff like that. So this should be OK now. Click save back into my WordPress dashboard. If we go to bricks and we go to templates, you can see now we have header template. It's built in bricks and it says here is a header and it's on the entire website. You can't get clearer than that, can you? And as soon as I reload it, the header has appeared because the header is meant to appear throughout the website, right? If I click, if I do anything here, I'll be designing on the page. If I click over here for edit header, what I love about this is that it opens up another tab. Look, there's the page, there's the header. So if I was to now mess around with it and then save it, I mean, I'm not going to do it right now, but if I had done that, then when you refresh the page over here, by the way, you do have to refresh 
or reload the canvas. Don't just go, oh, it's going to do it automatically. You do have to reload it. It will then pull through those changes. Now let's go ahead and start creating our hero banner and the rest of this page. I'm going to have a hero banner, which will basically be like section container and two columns, okay, or two blocks. And on the left hand side, I will have some text and a call to action button. And on the right hand side, we will have a image. So let's just go and do that. So I could either go over here and create a section container and add my blocks or use this. Now, here's one of the reasons I don't like using this approach too much. When I do that, I get a container and a column and column. And at the minute, I feel more suited to having a section container and then my block and my block. So I'm just going to get rid of that for now, like that. There is no, I mean, look, loads of people are going to argue with me in the, the comments, I'm sure, about, no, that was totally fine. But I'm just going to go with a section and a container, go to layout, go down to height. Now, you could use VH. VH100 would be the full screen of the height, and it would replicate that as long as you set it up for the tablet and the mobile as well. VH50 would be 50% of your visible screen size. I'm just going to leave it as pixel for now, and I'm going to set this up to be uh, about 600 pixels, okay? Um, I'm going to go to the container, go to the width, and ensure that this is 1,100. So even though your section is like your full width, the container or anything I add into there, like your blocks and your columns, will only be up to 1,100. What we haven't done is go to container over here and stretched it. If I had stretched a container, it would be the full width of the screen. I don't want the full width, 1,100, I'm fine with that. I'm then gonna go in over here and I'm gonna click block and add in a block to the container. You can't see anything at the moment because there's nothing to add in there. And I'm gonna just duplicate the block again. Now, the container at the minute is at the top. That orange line is the section height. That blue is the column because the column is at the top. So let's make sure we rearrange how that sits. Let's go back over to our section. So let's get the container to be sitting in the middle of the screen. Down here, we have the align main axes. That moves it down to the center. That would have moved it to the bottom. Let's leave it in the center. You could also align it horizontally as well. Horizontally? Yeah, horizontally. But because we only have like two columns at the moment, or blocks. I don't need to worry about that because they're already going to be sat like that anyway. Now the blocks inside the container are currently underneath one another. Let's just go to container and set these up to be rows. Remember, column, stacks, row, next door to one another. Now at this point you may go, whoa, I had to do that to the section, that to the container. What's going to happen with the blocks? Yeah, we'll get onto that in a moment. But if you start to think methodically about your layout, Everything just slips into place and, it, and what it allows you to do is have a lot of flexibility over the layout and what you can do. So into block one, I'm going to add in a header. So let's just go over here and we'll drop in a header like that. I'm going to click on the header, go to content. I'm going to paste in some text I've got from elsewhere. I am going to make sure this is a H1 header. I'm going to go, I'm not going to set my styles using anything I got here at the moment. I'm going to go over to uh, the actual style tab go to typography, set my color to be from this one here. Then my font size, go to REM. I'm not going to touch any of the alignment. I'm going to leave it as a 700. I'm going to increase the letter spacing ever so slightly. Just put a one there so it just pushes it out a little bit. Now, one of the ways I like to work is I don't like to start tweaking with the paddings or the layout of the columns or the blocks or anything like that. I like to get my stuff in. And then I can visualize better. Does it need more spacing or not? So I'm now just going to um, make a, I'm now going to add in a rich text down here. I think 2.5 works quite well there. Again, I'm going to give this a bit of letter spacing just to push it out a little bit. So it's easier to read on the eye. Now that is very cramped up. Don't get me wrong, that is super, super cramped up, but we're going to worry about that later. And then I'm also going to add in a button as well. I'm going to put the words, let's build. You know, contact me, click here, a little bit overdone these days. You've got to change what you're doing. This is where having a consistent style across your buttons can work quite well. Let's say you've got 20 buttons on your website. And then you go and change your primary color scheme or whatever. It will now instantly apply it across all of them. But I'm going to show you the other way to do it as well using the class system. 
Um, just want to mention, though, that if you want to make your button circular with border radiuses, you can do, but you could also do that with the border radius that I'll show you in a moment. Um, you can add icons to your buttons as well, which I'm not going to do. But this is the important one. Is this going to be an internal? Go to another page. So if I click over here and I start to type, well, I don't even have to type it. There you go, page two. You can even go to a template. Or if you want it to go to an external URL, you can put in your URL as well. Rather than me just doing a style here, like what I did with the header and the text, I'm going to create a class style, okay? And then we can apply that across any button. Or we can almost apply it anywhere we want as well. The normal way of doing it would have been we go into style and we start to assign our background colors, you know, our font size and all of that and our layout. But instead, what we could do is if I go over here to the top here, we can actually assign a class name and we can then assign that to the button or any other button or anywhere else we want as well. So I'm going to go over here and I'm actually going to call this button um, uh, style. You don't have to put the word style. I'm just doing that. And I'm now just going to click uh, create there. That is now going to create a style and whatever I apply here now will be applied to that style. Button style, it's in yellow, it's gonna apply it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say, uh, not the layout, in the typography, we're gonna say the typography for this is going to be a, uh, a white color, like that. Okay, cool, so far, so far good, so, so, so good. REM will make it be a two, so it's big, but it's not kind of like in your face kind of big. In terms, uh, yeah, we'll leave it as two. It will be centered inside the uh, the button. We will then go down and say that it will be a uppercase. Now, at the minute, you can't see it. I get that. You can't see it. I will add some color. Just bear with me. Uh, and for the letter spacing, we'll give that a one as well. Great. That's the typography. Now, for the background, let's go in. And I'm just going to pick uh, this color over here. So now we've got our uppercase, our REM2, which is font 20, uh, and we've got our reddish button there. Now, if I go down to border and box shadow, if I click on border, I can actually add in a bit of a radius. So I could go, well, if I go with 100, do you get the idea? If I go with 25, you get a bit more. If I go with 15 or 10, you get, a, you get a bit of a curvature on there, but it's not a full-on curvature, if that makes sense. It's just a little bit there. So, so far, you can see what we've applied. Does that make sense? I'm just going to hit save for a moment, right, over here. I'm now going to go back over here and see where it says remove. If I do that, it's removed. It is gone. But if I go over here, it now says I have got a button style. So if I pick it, it's applied it. Let me try, maybe this is probably a better example. Let me do this here, look. Uppercase and everything else with it. That is quite a funky way of adding some quick styling. So maybe you make uh, certain objects be a certain width all the time. You could now apply a style so everything is 75% as a custom width maybe, or 400 pixels, or your images are, 200 pixels high. You could apply this on the fly. Now, at the minute, I've got all this stuff in. I'm, in fact, let me just make sure I do it to the button because I took it off, didn't I? There we go. It is very, very cramped up. We are going to space things out. Now, while we're doing this, I've had a quick change in mind. I'm going to change this heading color to be uh, the dark color like that. And I am going to add in a divider line to go underneath uh, between the header and the next bit of text. So I'm just going to go over here and type in divider and I'm going to drop the divider in there. You could just click it and then drag and place it where you want. Let's set up our divider now in the content tab. We're going to make it three pixels high. I'm going to make the width of it be uh, about 450. No, I think 400 would work, work better. It is automatically going to be solid. The direction is horizontal and the color scheme will be our favorite pinky color there like that. I am now going to go back to my section and give this a bit of a background color. So in the uh, layout, not the layout, in the background tab, I'm just going to go over here and give this uh, that off uh, whitish color. So it kind of blends in with the header at the moment, but that's okay. Now, 
this block that we currently have everything set up in at the moment, if you look at the layout, this block, okay, is currently set is a direction where everything sits underneath one another. If I was to switch it, this is what would happen. I'm actually okay with the column approach. And this goes back to why when you get your head round the column and rows and all of that, it means that you can be quite fluid in how you build your website. So the container is a row, block one, block two, but within block one, it is set up as a column. So everything is stackable, sits like that. Let's just go back to the container because if you look over here, block two is at the top of the container. So in the container, I'm gonna go here. Don't be surprised if you sometimes go, well, is it this one? Is it this one? It's not going to hurt you to play around, but it is this one here to align it in the center of the page. Now into this block, we're going to add in a image. It says no image selected. Seriously, don't worry about that. Just click on it and now go and pick your image. And I'm going to go for this image here. This is a 1000 by 1000 pixel. It's a 50 kilobytes. Now I'm going to insert that image. I am, however, going to start to resize it. It's currently a full resolution image, which is great for quality of image. It's not going to link into anywhere. I'm not stretching it. I'm now going to go to the style and go to the layout. This image does not need to be that big. This image will only be 500 pixels in width. I do like to set my width and my maximum width, mainly because I don't want the image to start to resize. I want it to be just set in stone for what it's going to look like. The height, I'm not going to mess around with that. You know, that's if you wanted to like, you know, you could do that, but then make sure you go back over to your content here and make sure you've then selected cover like that. Otherwise you're going to get a squished effect. I'm just going to get rid of that. Go back over here and get rid of the height as well. So that will be my image per se. Now, I am now going to ask you to go back a step because if I've defined that as a 500 pixel sized image that you go back into your WordPress dashboard, go over to your media. And if this is the only time you're going to use this image, you're not going to use it anymore or for any further purpose. Okay. I would go to edit image and I would now scale this to be 500. So let's just go in and hit crop and I'm just going to get rid of some excess unneeded spacing around there. Let's click crop. Let's hit save. That is now using the 500 by 336 sized image. Believe me, that can make an impact on your page speed and any recommendations you might get. If we view this page right now, it's not looking that great really, is it? I mean, it's looking a bit, you know, so let's change things a little bit. I'm going to go over to my heading. I'm going to get pick up this text here, go over to my rich text, and I'm going to replace this rich text with that. I'm then going to pick up some other text and I'm going to go over to my heading and I'm going to drop this in instead like that because I've now realized the top wording I had was a little bit too heavy duty in what we got. I'm now going to start adding in a bit of spacing. So let's go over to our divider over here. Go to style, go to layout, and I'm now going to add in some top and bottom margin. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go with something like 30-30 uh, like that. A bit of spacing there. Let's go over to our button and I'm going to add in about 30 there as well. And you can see what's happening. OK, we are now moving things out. However, I don't like how close column one is to column two or block one to block two. So let's go over to the block. OK, like this. And I'm going to go to the right hand side and I'm going to say, give me at least 50 from the left, uh, from the right hand side like that. So now we've got a bit more better spacing going on there. Now, with regards to the image, that's still looking OK. Let's hit preview. That's a little bit more of a, a nicer layout. You could argue that the image needs to be way bigger and you could go away and do that. But I'm just getting across the build and how we're doing things. Now, with block one, I want to add something extra into it. So I'm going to click on the block and I'm going to add an image behind. So if I go to block and I go to a... Uh, style and go to background, I'm going to add in another image that sits behind. I might resize it uh, very shortly. Let's insert that. That image is kind of, you're not seeing it in its full glory at the moment because it's kind of cropped a little bit. So let's go to the styling of that image. Go down here. I'm just going to say, make this be a center center. I'm going to say, make it be a contain. 
And I'm also going to say uh, no repeat like that. So what we have is we have a bit of a background image going on there right now. That background image isn't looking superbly great behind the computer. I need it to be a little bit bigger, but I don't want it to kind of lose the top or bottom if you use the cover approach for the image, which is why I went for contain. But you can clearly see why. Look at the height of block one and look at the height of block two. Can you see you've got this like spacing going around it? Well, if we go over to block uh, two, if we go into the content, can you see here we've got stretch? If I do that, it's now stretched to be the same height as the other one. And we can now see a bit more of the background image. But I want to add in another little bit of an effect. If I click on the image, if I go to style and I scroll to layout, over here, when you scroll down a little bit, you have the entrance animation. I'm going to go with uh, fade in up. Where is it? Fade in up. There we go. So we get a bit of a fade in effect. You can change the speed of it slow, really fast, whatever. I'll leave it as normal. You can even add a delay as well. So let's say you got animation further down the page. It's not until you get to it and then maybe there's a 10 second delay. Why would you do a 10 second delay? There might be a 10 second delay and then it feeds through. So you can clearly see it's floating up there and that works really, really well. So I'm happy with that. Now this is where temptation can kick in and you could easily start building out the rest of your website. This is where I say hold back and check how it looks in the mobile. So when you're in your website, go to the top, obviously do it for your tablet modes and all of that as well. But we're going to go with the mobile portrait for now. Most commonly, that's how people are going to be accessing your phone, um, your website, sorry, by the way. Now if we click on this section here at the moment, um, this is where you can start to tinker with the layout. The layout for the desktop was 600 pixels high. If we go over here, it has still got 600, but I'm now gonna change this to be a VH and I'm gonna make it be 100, like that. The desktop is still 600. The mobile is now 100, okay? I'm also now gonna start to change some of the layouts as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the, um, sorry, stain the section. Go to styling. I'm going to add in some top padding. So I'm going to go over here and add in about, uh, that's way too small. We'll go in about 100 there just to push it away on the top. I'm also going to go about 20 from the left and 20 from the right. So things aren't cramped up. I have this thing about how I like to have layouts. So when you're on a mobile, I don't like it where things are right up against the edge unless it's a full width image or a full width button, but even then I say come in a little bit. Um, whatever sizes you set for your desktop, okay, seriously consider modifying it for your mobile, right? So let's go to the heading. Let's go to typography over here. We'll go with 3.5 there. We're gonna click onto this one and I'm gonna go with a two, uh, two actually might, might no, two, two's too small. 2.2, uh, make sure you are still on REM though, by the way, make sure it doesn't switch to pixel or anything like that. The button, I th think we can uh, do. Now, this is where you may wanna just consider the fact that this is using that style. So I've activated it again, because if I'm gonna change the class style for a button on the mobile, sorry, let me start again. If I'm gonna change the style for on the mobile for the button, I might as well do it to the class style. So in case you missed what I did there, let me just get rid of that. I just went and clicked it to make sure it is now activated. So when we go to the typography for that button, which is currently REM2, I mean, that is two, but if I was to go with one point, whoa, 1.8, that might look a little bit better, okay? And that now means that that has applied to that style. Let me just hit save as well, just to make sure everything is saved up. And then we have a uh, block two, which is the image. Sorry, let me go back a step. Block one, if we go to layout, we did add in a uh, 50 from the right because I don't mind having that on the desktop, on the mobile, I would actually like a bit more spacing. Well, I wanna use up more of my space. I wanna maximize it. Now block two, um, I am gonna add in a little bit of top margin because it's right up against block one. So we're gonna go in about 30. I think 30 is too small. We're going about 40 there. Now the image is too big. So we go to our image, which is uh, 500 pixels in width. Let's go with uh, 350. No, let's go with 370. And I'm just gonna set the maximum as well to be 370. And I'm gonna align it to be in the center like that. 
So what will happen is when you're viewing it on a mobile, that's going to slide in from the bottom, right? You're going to have your text like that. And then obviously you've got that coming in with your menu, right? Do you remember we set that all up? By doing that methodically now, it helps you going forward because I could, if I want, when I come to do my next section, copy that section and duplicate it and then mess around with the content. It will remember the padding I did for the section. I might have to go back in though and go, oh, actually, I don't need that 100. Fine. But it's got the 2020. It remembers what I've got in there. Um, so it can help you out going forward. The mobile score with the header and the hero banner is coming in at 99. I have to be honest, it it will go between 99 and 100. You sometimes get 95, 90. Just run it again because sometimes it's just down to your server speed. And on the desktop, it's hitting 100. I mean, without any optimization plugins and basic stuff being... I know it's a basic website, Hero Banner, you know, and all of that. There's nothing fanciful going on with it. There's no slider. There's no videos or anything like that. I get it. But to still get 99 on your mobile and 100 on your desktop without any optimization plugins cannot be ignored. It's like whew, brain explosion time. Right, so really quickly, we're going to duplicate the section. I'm going to pick block one up over here. I'm going to dump it in front of block two, so just swap them over. I just picked it up and dropped it like that. I'm going to get rid of that text there, get rid of the bar, bar get rid of the button. I'm going to swap the text over there like that. Go to the very first uh, block. Go to style, go to background, get rid of that background because I don't want to duplicate that image again. In fact, this section, entire section, I'm going to clear away the color so it's got a white color there. We go to the image, you click the image content, and we're going to pick this image here, which I've already resized to be 500 by 332, and I've cropped it a bit as well. So we get a completely different image in there. So what you now get is you get da 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 Because I've already duplicated the section above, I don't need to do too much to it, except if I go to this block with the text, this had, if I recall, yeah, it had 50 on the right, which I want to get rid of now and put that on the left. Bit of spacing away from the image like that. And when you view it in the mobile, you've got your section like that. And it's, and it's, got, it's maintaining the left and right 20 pixel padding. So that's where sometimes it can be quite quick and easy to do that. And with the second section added, I'm still getting 99. Well, I'm getting 99 on the mobile. And the desktop, I'm getting 100 as well. You can see it just over there. So... The scores are still really, really good. Right, now let's get started on the single post template. So if we go back over to our WordPress over here, um, you need to have some posts to start off with. If you haven't got posts, then you're not really going to get anywhere. I'm just going to create a, a really basic post and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to go over here and do add new and I'm going to call this post one. Now, in here, you don't have to be stylish. Just put your text and your images in, okay? Don't overthink it. Just get in your wording. Drump in, dump, 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 dump in a bit of words like that. I'm also just going to add in a image. Um, I'm, I'm really not bothered what I add in here. So let's just go with, uh, let's just go with this image over here. Okay, hello, that is me. And you know what? I'm just going to dump in the same text I added in before. Let's go over to our post over here. We have the featured image option, which I know I'm just hiding, but it will say featured image there. And I'm again just going to pick in the featured image like that. And we will just publish that. That is post one. Done. OK, nothing more you need to really think about there. You could even add in a little excerpt that will be shown like on the post archive page or an intro. So we might just put, I don't know, fake dummy post one, something like that. Let's just update that. That is now done. I'm just going to duplicate this three times with slightly different title and just slightly different images. I'm going to use a really cool plugin. It's a free plugin, one of my favorites, Duplicate Page, right? It's just very quick and easy when you just want to duplicate items, especially when you're building stuff or even if you're just doing a test tutorial like we are doing. So that's now activated. That's the only plugin I have at the moment, remember? I'm going to go to all posts and look, duplicate this. And we'll duplicate it again. Let's go to this one here, change it to be title two, update. Let's just edit post two. It's already got the title. I'm going to leave the image as it is. I really don't care. I'm going to go to post two and I'm just going to change the featured image and we'll go for this image instead like that. Publish that, publish that, blah, 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 blah. 
Let's go back into WordPress dashboard. Let's go to this one now, change this to be post three. I'm just flying through it, da, 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 right? Um, let's just edit this and I'm just gonna change the image on this one as well. Let's just go with this image here like that. Uh, that's the featured image, by the way, that you will see on the post excerpt and you can put it anywhere you want on the page. Let's just publish that as well. The one thing I didn't do, and this is really stupid of me, and I should have done this at the time I did it, okay, is if I just go into edit with this post, I didn't set a category. So I'm just gonna go over here and give this a category, add new, and I'm just gonna call it a fake like that, okay? That is my fake category. I'm just gonna update that as the category fake. If I go to quick edit here, I can put that one to be fake as well, update, and I can do the same over here. Now, the good thing about categorization is that you could have different categories for your posts, fake, real, artificial, whatever you want, okay? You can even have um, child um, categories as well. So I could have said the um, fake products, but product is a child of fake. And it allows you to do that when you set your categories up. But we've got these all down to fake at the moment. If I now go over to my Bricks page, I'm just gonna drop a new section in uh, there. In fact, I think it's in the wrong order now, isn't it? No, there it is, sorry, it's gone at the bottom. I mean, inside of there, okay, I'm going to now drop in a post uh, widget, which will be this one. I'm just gonna click it. Now the post widget has gone into this section over here. So we've got section container post. I am gonna go over here and I'm just gonna pick up a block, right? And dump the block in then put the post to sit into the block like that. Just to keep things uh, in a consistent way, section, column, block, post. So what we now have is post one, two, and three. You can see them, look, different images. Let me click on post, okay. You have the option now to do a query, okay. And what that means is that is I can now decide that am I pulling through pages, media, or post. Well, I know where I'm doing post. It's gonna be ordered by date, which it's already doing. I am gonna say they do it in ascending order. If you do descending, you'll have your latest first. So maybe we do want the latest first, right? Why wouldn't you? Um, post per page, well, let's say we're only gonna have three. Um, if you do offset and I put in, watch what happens, right? If I put in a two, it only, it now offsets it. So now it will, it will kind of now, it won't show the latest post, which was number three and number two. Number one was the earliest. If I change this to be one, it misses out post three. So if you've got 10 posts, but for whatever reason, you don't wanna show the latest one, you might put the number one. That then skips the latest one. If you put a number five, it skips the latest five and shows you the earliest five. Maybe you wanna have a different type of layout or the way you're styling them, but we're gonna get rid of that. Now in the terms bit, I'm gonna say only ever show me the fake one. So if you have different categories with fake, real, artificial, bionic, AI, whatever, or whatever category names you want, even products when you think about it, no, not products, posts, sorry, what am I saying? Posts, you would pick your categories here. Now in terms of layout, uh, it's a grid layout. We're gonna have three columns, right? You can see what it's doing. I mean, this is, I didn't pick the best images, did I? Look at it, it's all cutting off and going all over the place at the moment. I'm just gonna go to my container Go to my style and my layout for the container, because this was a brand new container, don't forget. I'm gonna make this be, um, uh, I'm actually gonna make this be 900 in width. It's gonna be slimmer than everything that sat above it. And I'm gonna say the maximum width is 900 as well. Let's go back into the post. Uh, just make sure this is all centered. Now I'm gonna go back to the content, go back to the layout. Uh, the spacing basically means um, how far are they spaced out. So if I do zero, they're now up against one another. But I do want to highlight something now. If I go and put in a 30, can you see it's applied it here as well? Which I don't want. I only want it to apply it in the middle, but I, want, I don't want the spacing to be here either. What you need to do with the post is when you go to style, you have the option for CSS. If you go down here, you have to drop in a bit of CSS. Let me get rid of myself there. Can you see there is a space there? There is a space. If I drop myself in now, that space disappears. Okay, so sorry if you couldn't see that before. I've just realized I might have been covering it there. Sorry about that. I'm really sorry. But now that will kind of sort it out. So let's go back to the content. 
What we are going to do though is just modify the images a little bit there. Now you can decide if you want to completely remove the image, which I don't think is always a good idea. You can make the image be linked. So if you click on the image, it will take you to the post. Now you might look at this and go, well, we've got to sort that out. The images don't look right. And you start messing around with the width and height. Believe it or not, this is, this is a bit of a funny one. It says grid image ratio and it's got square. But if you pick square again, it fits. I don't get it, but anyway, it works, okay? Uh, we're now just gonna go down to the field. At the minute, we have the post title and the post excerpt. So you can basically see it there, fake dummy post. You can see the wording. I could, if I want, get rid of that. You could hit the plus field, okay? And then over here, um, if you click this little lightning bolt, which is your dynamic data, you can now go, well, what do you want? So we could get back the excerpt if we want author image thing. If you've got an author image applied or whatever inside of your, uh, when we did the post, which we didn't do, well, actually, no, it would pull it through anyway from WordPress. Sorry, I'm, I'm confusing myself there with something else, but you could put in your date. So look, you get the, I mean, that's, that's bloody awful in it because it's got the link there. Sorry, let me get rid of that. Let me hit that one again, uh, date. There we go. So now you'll get the date. Now at the moment, the style for that looks really awful. But for each one of these, you could style them methodically. I can go to typography. We'll leave the typography as it is, but I might set the weighting to be like, I mean, that's ridiculous. You can't even read that, can you? There we go. So you could start to mess around with the size of it. Uh, we'll just put in 10 there. 10, what am I doing? We put in 15 there or something like that. So you can be quite methodical and clinical on the layout, the spacing and all of that. I mean, look, I could go back into this one here and say, um, and make it closer. In fact, get rid of the bottom as well. But no, don't do that. We'll have some spacing there. You can start to make it closer. So if we go into the title and I get rid of that, it's now right up against it. So if you want the text to be in the middle, if I go to the content tab here, I might go with a middle center like that. So it moves it over to the center. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of options here, right? Look, bottom right is, you know, yeah, there's loads of options and things you could do there uh, to make it look how you want. That is how you could add in a post archive. Now you could do this on an individual page as well, by the way. So look, you know, here's another page I've got, which has just got the post archive on there. I haven't laid it out properly at all. So if I go to layout, uh, not layout, sorry, content layout, let's just make it be a three there. Again, you could, you, you could mess around. You could give it background colors. There's a lot of stuff you could do on here. The main thing I just wanted to show you was we're just adding it onto a home page at the moment. The problem, though, is that when you click this, it's just going to show you a very ugly layout. I would probably say you want to add in a title here that says latest post or something. But look, watch what happens when I click on post three and just look how ugly it is. You got the title there. You got all this detail. The word, the font is wrong. You got the featured image right at the top. It's half cut off. You got this image here. By the way, this image here is going to be big no matter what, because I just dumped it into the post, didn't I? I should have resized it in the post, but it just looks really, really bad at the moment. Here is the standard layout. It's It just doesn't look good. So what we're going to do is actually create a single post template. We're back in bricks and we're back in the templates. We're going to click add new and I'm actually just going to call this single post uh, template because I like to keep things quite simple. I'm now going to pick single like that and just hit publish. And then I'm going to go with edit with bricks, obviously. So we're going to have our header at the top. You could, if you want right now, make a decision that, well, yeah, I want it on the entire site. But for this particular page, I actually want to disable the header. So do I want the header or do I not want the header? So again, you can start to disable things, but we're going to leave it in. I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to say, give me a section and a column. Okay. Um, and then I'm also going to say, let me just expand on that. Um, so just give me a block. Now inside of the block, this is where I'm going to start to add in my contents. So we saw what it was giving us really ugly looking post, right? So I'm going to say, let's go for an image first, right? Let's drop in an image. Then I'm going to go post title. Do I want to show the excerpt? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. It's up to me what I want to do. Do I want to show metadata, post content? Um, in fact, we'll add in social sharing and I'm going to dump that now above the, below the metadata like that. 
And I'm just going to check, is there anything else I want to add in? Um, comments? Well, if you want to enable comments, fine, add in the comments. Do I want to add in the author? Yeah, okay, we can add in the author as well and post navigation. It's, I mean, post navigation is probably not a bad one to add in actually right at the bottom, I think. Let me just drop that in like that. There we go. Sorry, I had the block outside. I've just moved it back in there. So we've got all of this content. So for the container, I've said just uh, give me about uh, 40 from the top and about 100 from the bottom. That's for the container. We have a block. We have the image. What I'm going to do now is just move my all the contents in the block over to the middle like that. Let's now go to our image. And then you're not going to select an image for this when you when you click on image. You're not going to just go, oh, yeah, let's just stick this in. No, it's got to be like a dynamic image, right? It's got to query through and pull through the right one. So what we're going to do is over here where you have the select dynamic data, you will go through and you will pick the featured image. So whenever you click it, the featured image is brought through, okay? We've got the post title. Well, that's the post title. And then you've got all of these items over here. This is where now you just got to do your spacing out. Now, when it comes to the social sharing icons, I'm not a massive fan of like having too many. And sometimes I like to keep the colors a little bit consistent. So I'm actually going to get rid of uh, some of these. I'm also going to get rid of the brand colors, okay, because I'm going to assign my own color to them. Now, look, you can have it going in a stacked the row does look a lot better. I'm going to give them all a little bit of um, spacing. That, that's way too much. Let's go with five and uh, five there as well. Space them out a bit like that. Let's go to the background color and we're just going to, well, just pick this color here. Right, just fast forward going really quick now. Um, in terms of the layout, I'm just going to give this a bit more spacing of about 40 just so it spaces out from the content. So in effect, right, this will become the template that's going to be used for all of the items that we have on the page. I haven't set the typography. In fact, I haven't done it for the title. I haven't done it for the metadata. I'm not going to go through every little individual thing here. However, you would have gone through and then you would have said, right, for your typography, I mean, look, I'm just going to put in a ridiculous space like that, five, just to highlight the point. Also, with your content, you might decide that you don't want to know about how many comments there are, so get rid of it. Are you going to have it stacked like that? Or, you know, you rearrange it accordingly to what you want. And the same with the content as well. So you would go in and then you would do your typography. You're going to pick your color for how it will be presented. Let's go with black like that. And then you're going to pick your size. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with REM and we'll go with a two. Just go with a two. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to see because I haven't tested it yet. What we do still need to do, though, is go to the template settings. So we kick the click, click, click. We click the cog, the settings. And we're now going to say that the conditions for this, when we click it over here, is this will be the post type over there. I had to just double check that. We go for the post type. And this will be for all posts like that. And that's what we got to do. This is a single template for the posts, okay? And we are now just gonna save that. If I go over to our fake homepage and whatever we've got, right, and I click on, say, this one here, which is post three, this is what we get. This is the image I set up. You know, you probably would have gone with a full width image. And by the way, if you do go for a full width image, make sure in your container, okay, or how you might have two sections, right? I did it all in one section. You could have multiple sections on it. You could have loads of stuff on here. Don't, don't be fooled into thinking this is all I have to have. You could have a, a, a you could have a map on here. You could have an accordion on here. You can do what you want. Just make sure though, if you want it on full width, that you then go over to your content over here and you have stretched it. If you don't stretch it, it won't be stretched, <laughs> basically. Okay. If you want to have full width. But what you now have is you have your image. You, you, I mean, okay, I didn't. I should have set the color here for that as well. Let me just go and do that for the social sharing icons. Let's go to style. If I go to typography, and I'm now just going to set this to be. Uh, let me just do it here really quickly. F F F F F like that. White like that. If I now save that, and we go back over to this page, and I refresh the page, you get it there. So just bear in mind the background is the background color. The color of the icons is actually your typography. And you could have made that bigger. I've, I've not done a very good styling, have I? But I'm just showing you how, if you think methodically about it and you take your time on it, you can get it to look quite good in what how you want it to look. But that is 
adding in the posts. So remember that when you do it, you've got to apply your template settings to it. So apply to the post. Now let's very quickly add in WooCommerce products. This isn't a tutorial, by the way, about WooCommerce completely, okay? There's loads of stuff on there and we've got videos on our, um, uh, our YouTube channel. And don't forget our websquadron.co.uk mastery modules where we have some guides and tips about WooCommerce and some of the questions you really want to be asking your clients or yourself before you do a WooCommerce website. So let's just go in and we are now going to do a search for WooCommerce like this. And we're going to install that. I'm not going to install any payment gateways because I'm not setting all of that up. And we've got videos on that as well. So we're just going to install that and quickly fly through quickly on setting up your single product template and your products archive. Go ahead and set your store up, you know, put your details in. I mean, I, I, I've just put in a fake one, all right? Okay, I don't really live on those islands. I'm just saying it other. We don't really care, blah, 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 blah. At this point, the whole of WordPress will just explode on me now, I bet, because I haven't put in all my details and stuff and go, no, 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 da, 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 da. I don't really care about any recommended business features because it always goes and installs loads more than you need. We are going to continue with our active theme. We don't need anything else storefront. We don't need that. Now we're just going to go over to our products. By the way, if you ever want dummy products for your own tutorials or whatever, what you do is you have to go over to the, the WordPress repository, get the WooCommerce, just download it to your hard drive, go to unzip it, go inside of it. In fact, I'll show you where it is. Look. If I go to my folders over here, WooCommerce, down here you'll have a folder called Sample Data, and inside of there you can pull through your products. I'm just going to download Sample Products CSV, open that, um, and hit Continue, and that's going to pull through images and loads, and loads of stuff like that. Look, blah 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 blah. I don't really care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Just run the importer. So after a minute or two, that will create your products. And if I now view them, look, I've got loads of products, some with variation attributes. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> okay, I don't really care about that because I just wanted to kind of get across about it. You can pull through some dummy products if you really, really want. Um, there is a warning over here saying that I still need to set up the shop. And that's going to be with your settings in terms of WooCommerce, in terms of your shipping, your payments, your emails, all of that. But I have to be really honest, I'm just showing you how we create um, items within our Bricks Builder website. Right, okay, so if we just go down here, do you remember I said it would be good to add in a title down here? I would definitely do that. And I'm just going to quickly add one in now. So we're going to add in a section. I'm going to move that section to sit above there like so. So this is going to be the section. Um, bear in mind that you may want to rename him stuff as well. So I, have, I haven't stressed on that. So I'm just going to call this uh, post section, something like that. So it's a good thing to do in my opinion, my humble opinion, right? I'm just going to go over here and I'm just going to click on this item here, go back to this section here, paste in the text like that. Uh, sorry, what am I doing that for? click on the actual text. Okay, uh, center align it. And I'm just going to say, I don't know, um, latest posts like that. You would obviously style it accordingly. Okay, I'm not spending a huge amount of time on this. Look, I've also just centrally aligned it. So it's, you know, it's in the right place. I am just going to duplicate this section, uh, which has now gone to the bottom down here. I'm just going to go into this, uh, uh, let's just go to style. Let's just give it about 50 from the top there as well. Let's just go in and change it. Um, please don't start commenting on the video below that, oh my God, this was horrendous. You know, um, you, you could have styled this so much more, but yeah, that's because I'm just getting across how you do stuff. Okay. You know, give me a break. Right. Um, Let's now just go over here. So I am now going to duplicate the post section, which will now go to the bottom down here. I'm going to just rename it to be a uh, products section like that. And I am going to get rid of this widget. Please bear in mind, if you install WooCommerce, you might need to refresh the page before they show up. So we're just going to pick up the products one here like crazy, bringing over everything and anything, which I don't really want. So let's go over to product. Let's now set our query. And how many products are we going to show? 
maybe we'll show um, eight. In fact, what we haven't done. No, the container is set because we used a post one from above. So remember that. So we're going to show over eight, descending order. You might select different types of products. So you can now pick what you're going to show. You might say, right, are we only going to show on sale items or featured, depending on how you've set them up in your WooCommerce products. What about your categories? Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just go for t-shirts, right? So there we go. We just go for the t-shirts. Maybe you're going to go for particular tags. If there were any tags set up, so it might be a Reebok t-shirt, stuff like that, okay? So you would spend more time doing this, obviously, in terms of styling and how it's going to look. But the main thing that I just want to get across is that it's not that difficult. And obviously, you got your fields as well. So that was the query, right? Then you got your fields. And don't forget, you can set your individual typography as well. So let's just go with the weight over here to be, uh, let's go in 900. Make it black and bold there, okay? And you can start to align as well. So I'm not doing this properly. I get that, right? There's loads of you are going to be watching this and getting really, really annoyed with everything I'm doing at the moment. And if I go back up over here to the content tab again, over here, you'll see it says gap. If I change that to zero, they're going to be really close to one another, which does not look great. 40, I mean, look, if you do 80, it's now really, really tiny. So there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff you can do here. Okay, like that. If I now click one of these, this is what I'm going to see. Now, you might look at that and go, yeah, okay, I'm okay with that. But what if you want to have a bit of individuality over how you stylize it? So if we go back over here to our WordPress and go to templates, we are going to create a new template and we're going to call this a single product. By the way, what I just did with the product, when you stylize it, you might need to use a bit of CSS as well if you want to be really um, um, funky with the layout and the colors and stuff like that is you could create a product template as well or add the products to a page as well. But this is now a single product template that we're adding. That probably didn't make sense. But when you add in WooCommerce, you will have all of these become enabled. So product archive would be your shop page. Hit edit with bricks. But here's where we can start to design our layer. I mean, I'm just going to fly through this now, right? Let's just do a two column approach like that with two boxes there already. Might add in your product gallery. And then in the second column is where you might start to add in your title, your short description, your price, your stock, your meta, your rate. You know, you, oh, I added it in that twice, haven't I? You add to cart and you're going to then play with it in terms of your margin and your padding and how you work with it. Um, your spacing, your layout and all of that. Of course, please do make sure, and I haven't touched on it in a while now, check your mobile, okay? Check how it looks on your mobile because if you don't, you may regret it, especially if things start to look really, really ugly in terms of the layout and how things look, all right? So please make sure you do that. But the layout is basically you messing around and creating things to look good in what you want. And then the key bit, though, is that when you have done that and you're at the point where you're now about to save or publish whatever, go to your settings and you go to template settings and you go to conditions. You don't set this on the entire website, otherwise it will appear all over the place. You want to go to post type. You might be thinking about, hold on, this isn't a post, this is a product. You want to go to post type and then down here for post, you pick products. Products was not there until we added in WooCommerce. Let's go for products. This will now be the template for all products. So that is now set up for our layout. This is a really ugly layout, okay? Don't, don't look at this and start panicking, all right? I'm just showing you how ugly and awful this looks. So if I was to go back over to uh, this page now and we just refresh it again, and I now pick uh, the T-shirt with the logo, you're going to get this slightly messed up look because it's now based on this layout over here, right? So it's not looking as polished. However... That is how you would set up your templates. Now, we've just created a very rough and ready page. We spent a bit more time on the hero banner here and the header a bit. And then we've just kind of flown through just to show you how you could build things through. I didn't do the footer template, which, again, is really, really simple and easy to do. You would just do add new template, call it footer template, pick footer and go away and build what you want. 
The interesting thing though is that when we have this page now built, how is it stacking up on the performance score? Remember, there's no optimization plugins on here other than what you get built into Bricks anyway. And the only two plugins I've got at the minute are Duplicate Page and WooCommerce. You would have had a payment gateway, you might have had a few other fancier things as well. But I'm really keen to see the mobile and the desktop score. And this is the bit where it gets interesting because WooCommerce, whenever you add it to a website, it will pull your score down. And I usually have to use Asset Cleanup or, or Toptimize or something else like that to kind of stop CS, well, to minify the CSS and JS code. The mobile score went down to 76. And I tested this about 20 odd times over the last 20 minutes or so, quite a bit of time. And it kind of jumped around between 68 and the highest it ever got to was 78. 76 is what I'm kind of getting quite consistently around that value. And the desktop never went over 90. That's some aspects of the WooCommerce are now starting to kick in and things like that. And it is going to affect the score. That being said, you know, um, that's not completely, totally unexpected. Um, you would therefore... See, the way I was looking at this video in the tutorial was, could you get away without any optimization? And I think now you would still need an optimization plugin. However, if you didn't have a shop, you could quite consistently hit 99 and 100%, which for a lot of websites out there that are not shops, that's not a bad thing. And you could even argue that even with any other page builder out there, when the minute you have a WooCommerce shop on, you can get a high score, but there's always a little bit of a hit somewhere, isn't there? Um, now, overall, I have found it quite a lot of fun playing with bricks. There's still a lot more to learn and get my head around. Um, and if you're used to using other page builders, you've got to get on board with different ways of doing things like uh, some of the settings, the colors, how you do things as well. However, I think Bricks Builder is a great, great theme. And like, I'm excited to be using it for some websites. I mean, you know, I keep stressing this you got WordPress and one theme. And if you're not doing WooCommerce, you might have duplicate page as an additional plugin to duplicate your pages. You might have rank math. This does have inbuilt SEO as well. Um, so you could get away with not even using rank math, which by the way, is going to be integrated or so I have heard. But I think it's a great theme, page builder product to use. Um, and, you know, I'm not here to sell you anything because there is no affiliate commission link or anything like that. But they're the prices. Lifetime unlimited websites. I, I mean, I would say, right, you're crazy not to go for it if they ever jack up the prices or limit how many websites you can build per license. Hey, I'm Imran Sadiq, Web Squad, and I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, with the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring.